Okay, here we are back again. Um, morning. Since you were last, I've put, you see over there, I put the perimeter um, 6b1 all the way around. <clears throat> I've also, and by the way, remember I said I'd insulate in that corner? There it is, hold on. Um, I also, up there, for when I put the soffit, I've, um, that's, a, that's a long span for the soffit, it'll, it'll, it'll droop. So um, I put a, a noggin board catcher, if you like, in the, in the middle. Um, so that's what we're doing at the moment. What I'm involved in now is, swing around, I've got a load of fascia and soffits, etc. Just to um, just to go through. Tell you what, in case you've never cut this stuff, I'll um, I'll briefly go through it. I'm going to teach you to suck eggs again, but you know some people might want to know. Right then, what I tend to do, I've got the size of the boards which I've done there. So as I said, this little thing scratches. So I'll put that on. Give it a little scratch. scratch there so get it square now, it's not so bad in the summer but this stuff can get quite brittle especially in it's cold so a very fine tooth uh, hand saw or even better still a multi See, I've got uh, a whole bunch already cut down there, so I'm going to put some in now, and I'll show you. Right, I don't know if you can see that staring straight into the sky, but what we've got is uh, the right size board. They do look nice when they're that way, because you can put the screw into there, having put this into the slot like this. All right, it's a bit awkward because he doesn't want to go in. If you put it the right way around, so try and get that in there. Try and feed that in there, at sort of at the same time, and you find it'll just catch there. Very small scraper or thin knife, whatever. Just sort of feeds it in. See, I'm in now. Just got to finish that bit off. In we go. Get okay, nice and level. Poke it into that slot. You got obviously you got that much play you can come in or out you got 25 mil more or less um oh, just get that in this end i'm going to get nice and parallel i don't know if you can see it on the camera if i made a shot any better um as long as it's parallel if you if you're in a little bit don't forget the fascia comes down and then wraps under it's like a big l so it wraps under like so all this will be hidden anyway the problem is with putting this that way, I know I've got to do each one of these already cut to that length. To put it all the way and just put it up in one, obviously that's much simpler, but you're going to end up having to put pins all the way along and they'll be visible. Now some people don't mind that, especially if you're putting soffit vents in, because they, they like them to be in the centre of these sort of artificial panels, whereas if you've got it long lengthways, trying to put it in the centre panel, the chances are you're going to hit one of these studs, rafters. Um, which is a bit awkward if you're trying to put a, a down lighter spot in. You can obviously you need the room behind here, but um, I'm not putting any in. The end lights I'm going to have on here are on the front, and I'm going to have wall lights, outside wall lights. So that's how you get those in. Oh, I'll just finish it off, of course. Only off half cocked. And then, and again, I don't know if I cut the camera so you can see it. I'll move it around a bit. That's any better, but 
pop yourself a little screw in. Just stick it up there. Nice and gently. That's done. It's not coming out of there. It's not coming out of there. Next one will do that. So on and so on. All the way down. And all the way around. Oh yeah, and the uh, starter trim. It's just what they call J trim. You can imagine the profile. It looks like a letter J. Um, we just screw it straight through the top. Put it, put it against there. Press it in. Screw it. Screw it all the way along. When you get to the end of your your length, as it were. These come in five meter lengths, usually. Doesn't matter if you're an overshoot. Just start the next one there, measure towards the end. Oh yeah, let me just explain one on that subject. What I'm gonna do, because it looks nice, or it will look nice, all the way done, in that sort of orientation, as it were. At some point, I'm gonna change direction to go around the corner. Now, I could change direction here, Lock that off and have these going that way, which I will do at the front because it's a bigger overhang. But here, I think it'll look nice with that running straight the way through, so you can't actually see that from the approach of the garden. That'll just be 90 degrees, done the same way, finished at the same corner as this. So I'll carry the other side straight through like that. Um, yeah, that's it. What I was going to say about this doesn't matter about it finishing on a joist because. It's hollow socket, it weighs less than a sparrow's eyelash. So we can put that on. Just finish it there, just butt it up. I'm sorry, you're going into the sky, into the sun, sunshine. Let's butt it up. Because um, when this is in, this next piece, it'll hold it. Like I say, it weighs nothing. So trust me, I have literally done hundreds and hundreds of these. So we'll see how it works out. Okay, it's the uh, <coughs> end of my day. It's getting a bit dark now. I don't want to look it. So that's all done. That's all done. Can't get too far back because there's too many trees and tents here for you to get a good idea of it. That's it from down there. Okay, all done on there. If we run along the back, I haven't done a lot of filming today because it's been full on. On all along there, I've still got to put the fascia on, which we'll do in the morning. And I'm set myself another task that I'm going to be disappointed over. I'm going to try and throw these boards up there and screw them down. So that's that then. That's uh, thank you and good night. Some bad news as well, I think, on the horizon. There's a nasty smell of burning wires coming from the old Dewalt 216 mil mitre saw. Can't believe it. I only had it 15 years. There's tape holding it together. <laughs> Oh, as much as I love to buy new tools, this is going to be a tragedy if this dies on me before this lot's done. Oh well. R.I.P. Alright, good morning again. Um, after another night of rain, even though it was promised, nice and dry. What I'm going to do now is uh, get some of this fascia nailed up. Um, I'll put set the tripod up in a sec. What we're going to do is, what I used to do, like I said the other day, I've done literally hundreds of houses with this stuff. I used to come in off the end, about 100 mil, well not bad 100 mil, 100 mil. And then every 600, I would put two nails. So we're looking, I'd put one there, one there. 600 in, one there, one there. But I'd measure and squeeze put the square on and I'd measure them all up. Now I don't know if you've ever watched Oakwood Garden Rooms, um, shout out to him because he was just putting um, his hammer down, so he dressed his hammer, on well, 100 million first, then he dressed his hammer on the, on the next nail, drop it down, put the nail on, 
and then just upend it, or from which end. I mean, apparently he had criticism saying, no, you're using too many nails, but on a small board like this, you know, which is 150 mil, if you put in um, one nail in every, um, what's a hammer? I mean, my hammer's about probably 400 mil. You put in more frequent, but only using one instead of the two. But if anybody's ever tried to get a ring shank nail out, You'll know they're pretty good. One every 400 is going to be plenty for these. That's a lot, still a lot of nails. So shout out to Liam, it was fair enough. Fair enough. Forget the naysayers. I think it's a good idea too, and I'm going to do it. Also, you've got to think about when you put the nail, you put one nail, and nails up, the top of the board is going to have the, um, the trim for the rubber roof, also screwed through onto the top, so you've got one down there, screws at the top, it's already pretty secure, so um, right, we'll crack on with that then. Okay, so the method, the method I'm using is I've marked um, 100 million, then I'm coming every 500. Just marking 500s, 500s, and then I get this, put it on a little mark. Um, this is American, obviously Milwaukee, so it's in inches, but four inches on this particular one. That's a little circle there. You see if you can see that little circle in the, in the sun, and that's where we'll go along with our nails. Put it in, get it started. Because at the top, we've got um, the trim that holds the rubber roof down, which is obviously folds around onto this top of this, so that'll be secure with screws. One of these. Also, because some. Uh, I'm going to do this on my own. I don't know if any of you tried to put a, a five metre soffit board up on your own, but it's a little bit awkward. So I made this like a gallows thing. What I'm going to do is screw this to the side of the building so that the other end of the board can rest on it against the timber uh, fascia I've put round the under fascia, if you like. Put that against it. It'll stop it from falling down. I mean, it'll still wobble about, but. And then I'll just work my way along nail, 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 nail till I get to the end. Um, and that last bit will obviously, once it's, once I'm close, I can hold it up nice, get nice and tight under the soffit. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for the most part. And the three sides and two sides in the back. On the front, I'm going to have to put another piece on top just to extend it out a metre. Um, it should, I mean, it's only spatial, but we should hold it nice. So that's what I'm going to do. So we'll have a look at that. Before we go any further, um, what we need to do as well, when you've got a corner, so this, this board will meet another board, um, this overhang, this, this underhang rather, the, the part of the L, is going to be in the way. Yeah, another one down here, that's going to have an L on it as well. So. What a lot of people do is cut this much, cut out of there, from under, from that underside there. They cut out, so they, they both go together. Much simpler method really, just 45 it. You don't need to come from the very corner and make it like a knife edge across there. Just from the back face. Just see, can you see the, the line I've done? I don't know if that focuses or not. I've just drawn a little pencil line. 45 degrees, it's like 10 mil down or 9 mil down, 45. Same on the other one, rip those off. When they go together, that back corner and the back corner of the of the other the side, the other corner, they will be together. And then when the, the corner cover goes on, 
it covers everything. So that's all you can see from underneath. See where the cut's going to be? Yeah, that just covers it completely. So it's nice and easy. Just do a 45. Both sides, boom. Okay, not filming everything because it's. I just want to get on with it, but it's starting to take shape now. We've got that down there, all across here. That was fun, as you can imagine. Just showing you that little gallows bracket in use. That's not, you see all the nails sticking out, that's not, uh, not pinned on yet, apart from these couple here. Uh, it's easy because I'm with my little May step that I made for the to get in and out of here for a bit. Upending that, I can reach that now, so I don't need to squeeze the ladders up this little bit. So, uh, yeah, again, hopefully, I'll put it back on when I've finished the rest of this black stuff. Right, morning, as you can see, we've got a little bit of wrap on, house wrap. I need to get a little bit more because 50 meter roll is not going to go around three times. So I need um, <coughs> about 20 meter roll to go around this, 18 meters all the way around. Um, well, I'm going to finally throw those boards up. Now, it's uh, a bit of a late start this morning because I've uh, had a I'm banging headache. I go, what do you get? Like flickering eyes. It's like a start of a migraine. Um, I'm trying to walk up there on a bunch of sticks. Is uh, it's not really good because, as Adam, uh, Mark, and Rich will attest to, um, I've got this medical condition. Most doctors called he's a clumsy bastard. So. It's better I'm not trying to walk around up there um, until I've got something. I'm going to spread the boards out, but I've had a little bit of a lie down in a darkened room. All right now, probably midday ish. So I'll get that sorted, get them up finally, and uh, see how that works out. Right, we've, uh, you can see we've thrown all the boards up at the moment. <coughs> what I've done is I've snapped a line. You can see it's all the way along, which is from the edge of the face here, all the way around. If I stick to that line, we should be nice and square for the first row. Um, what I'm going to do is screw it down and then I will glue along each of the joints, seal that nice. There's no need to glue it down to the, uh, to the rafters like you did the floor. It's just to stop the squeak, he's having to walk up here, so that's what we'll go then. glued down <coughs> well glued together no glued down the screwed down now I've got to just trim make that nice and straight across there that edge just set the circular saw to the depth of these straight across the back trim those off and rather annoyingly on that much short I guess because I had 3.6 length uh, roof rafters. Because um, I've put the 6 to 1 all the way around, which you can see there. I suppose that's added it on, plus you've got 9 mil of fascia board, which I've gone to the you know, level with a 9 mil fascia board. So I guess all that has taken off and added up to that. So. I'm going to rip that tongue off. Actually, I've got most of a board there. And down on top of that PIR, I've got a, another full board. So actually, I might put the two 
groove edges of those two boards down to wherever that comes about here where the hoe is didn't get that from Vegas and then uh, I'll rip the tongue off the last bit uh, and just butt it up and glue it and that's it so I'm just gonna that's what I got the hoe up for to scrape all the, the glue it's it's proper, especially there for where I started first gone off there and this is the last one I've put on. So it's it's all crispy now. I'll scrape all that off, get me blower, blow it off. And uh, I'll throw the um the rubber up. <laughs> he said that like it's a I'm throwing a current bun. It's uh yeah. I'll heave the however many hundred kilos of crappies up here. Um, if it's too much for me, I'll go and get the giant and see if he'll help me. But uh, yeah, happy days. Are we scared? Happy days. Oh, I'm going to shoot myself in the face if I say that once more. Right then, let's get it lit. Here's a new one. She's 11. She's arthritic. What? What the bloody... Tell me you didn't climb up there. I can only assume you've jumped out the window. Really? OK, morning. We're... Uh, up on the roof, um, as you can see, we've got the membrane on. I've pulled it into place so we've got an overhang even ish all the way around. Um, is enough there to trim the uh, trim the excess off. Um, what I'm going to need to do put there is um, I'm going to have to put a lath all the way along there, flush with the surface of this. So when you put the uh, the gutter trim on, because obviously this is the lowest edge where the gutter's got to go, put the gutter trim on there, um, that lath stands it out so it basically falls into the gutter, otherwise it would fall down the wall behind the gutter because there's a, there's a couple of mil gap between a gutter and a, whichever wall you know the brackets are attached to. Um, what we're going to do now is, is the adhesive. I've already blown off all the crap and bits of dust and whatever because you need to roll it back like a carpet halfway. When you get to halfway, um, you then start doing, um, I'll film it in a minute, but it's a, you've probably seen it on other videos. It's a, a, a band of um, a couple of rollers, a couple of rollers worth, width worth if you like, uh, 500 mil ish um, of a band across there and then roll it back over that sticky quickly broom the dry broom there we go quickly broom out the uh, brush out the, the air bubbles etc uh, repeat rinse and repeat carry on all the way to the end and then pull that side back do exactly the same thing which you see a lot some people do in other videos they'll just grab it and just drag it all the way back um, you've got to sort of climb over it, you put, you're getting adhesive all over the place you're getting rubbish on the inside that's why I swept it off and blown it all off now because when you do roll it obviously each surface is touching the back as it were so if you've got any rubbish on this it'll stick and then as it rolls over 
it'll pick it up and put it underneath sort of where the glue is so you need to get uh, get it nice and clean all over right I'll try and get some kind of angle because obviously it's difficult to put a camera up here um, I'll do it I might move you around a little bit but we'll, uh, we'll get on with it Right, what we've, what we've got now, half of it's down. The, um, the glue itself, the manufacturers recommend leave 150 mil all the way around the edge to put a contact adhesive, so coat the rubber, coat the timber, leave it till it tacks off, and then press down. It's extra sticky. Never really understood that. You've got screwed down and nailed down beads that grips the edge all the way around. Why do you want to make it really difficult for yourself? But incredibly messy contact adhesive as well. I don't know, a more cynical person might say it's just trying to sell you another product but uh, it's not really necessary, I don't think. I can't physically see how this is going to tear off anyway, this glue's pretty strong. But we need to actually fixed, batten down on the sides as well. So that's why you've seen me just go straight to the edge with a water-based adhesive <coughs> and we'll carry on. Uh, we'll flip you around to the other side. Well, I might just turn you off because you know what's happening. I just rip, rinse and repeat. I'm going to do the same thing again. So uh, at the risk of making a really long video again, I might just shorten it so you know what's gonna happen for the next half right that's all that done it's down just got to put the uh, the bead in around the edge now it's like a well you'll see it it's like a, a curb all the way around the front and the sides is a is a curb and on the back it's lower obviously it's lower that's the water so it doesn't fall off the sides it just falls off the back <clears throat> which I'm going to put into a gutter and then I'm going to buy a water butt and do me bit right just to explain how this rubber works this is the gutter this is the gutter trim which is different to the curb trim where you guys see two pieces First of all, you know, I told you I screwed the lath onto the end. So imagine this is the lath, this, this is the top of the roof, that's the, that's the back wall. So this goes onto there, can you see the profile is slightly got a chamfer on the top. So put that on there with screws. Then now this is a little bit, imagine it's a massive piece of rubber, comes across the top of the roof, hangs over, hangs over that. This then, it's got some sponge, a little piece of a sponge all the, way, all the way across there. That then goes against it, gives it a screw to it, and pinches down, so what you end up with is just that. So that's, that's the top. That's the top of your roof. That's the edge. 
the rubber comes down, down there. This is then nailed with poly top nails, the, the big mammoth nails. Uh, and that's your gutter trim. Water runs off there, down there, into your gutter. But it, it stands off a little bit into the gutter because that's where the the, that la then the lath was. And the roofing batten. Hold fast, I'll show you. This slightly different. This is the curb trim. It's the difference in size. It's quite big. The curb trim goes. I imagine this is the this is the roof now. There's the rubber going over the edge. I know it's insulation, but use your imagination. This then goes on top of it, pushes down. That sponge compresses. It's got paper on it. Just took the paper off. It's not sticky, it's just to protect it from dust. So that goes on the edge. You see that sponge there? Push it down, compress the sponge, pop it in with all poly top nails again, all the way around the edge. Uh, and I'll take you up the top now and show you what the finished product looks like. Right, that's the finished product, it's nice and flat. We've got the curb trims, which we just talking about. Uh, too close to the edge here because obviously I'm over on the overhang here. Uh, the corners just pop on, there's nothing complicated about that. Pressed all the way around. Every, jo every joint's got a, a joint cover. And then on the end, these corners, they've got a little they're both the same, but that little end there pops out, so it's just like perforated. I'll push that now to put it to come out. That one, take that one out, it goes over the kerb, leaves it blank. I mean, it's not perfect, but quite attractive, I guess. That's the core. The water goes, stops from running over the side, takes you down there over the edge, which is what I was trying to explain over there. Pops on with poly pins. The, uh, the rubber will all be um, cut off to underneath, right underneath there. Um, I may leave a little bit on at the back just to guide it into the into the gutter, but the rest of it, where it's, where it's let's have a look, quick look on the fascia there, you see? All that's got to be trimmed up. I've cut a little bit off, that little bit of rubber that I was playing with earlier showing you. Um, where is it there? So that is, that little bit there is kind of what the finish product's going to be when I, when I cut it all off. So here we are. I'd like to say it was easy, I know you haven't seen much of it, but trust me, it's two days of gruel that was on my own. Here we go. If, um, let's turn it around again. If we uh, don't get any more footage done, then uh, Thank you very much for watching. Um, please press the subscribe. Please punch the like. Like, like. Uh, try a like. It's probably better. Um, love you all, and I'll see you again on the next one. Thank you very much.